Hi, my name is Nicholas Fletcher and today I will be discussing my consumer behaviour. Let me first start by discussing what consumer behaviour is. According to Michael R. Solomon, consumer behaviour is a field that draws upon different disciplines such as psychology, economics and sociology to explain what choices consumers make. Additionally, spending habits are generally split into three different buying situations, which are routine, limited and extended problem solving. Today I will be splitting my consumer habits into these three topics. The first type of purchases I will be addressing will be that of routine purchases. These purchases involve a very short decision making process and are often part of a routine. For me, a routine purchase would definitely be orange squash. This is because whenever I go to the supermarket, I always put it in my basket without thinking. This falls under the theory of planned behaviour, as proposed by East Czech Asgen in 1985. First of all, this applies to me through subjective norms. Subjective norms are the normalities within your friendship group or family. So would you look out of place if you were to buy a different product? I've grown up always drinking Robinson's Orange Squash. Therefore, it would be strange for me to change products so late on, making it my subjective norm. Secondly is your attitude towards the product. My attitude towards Robinson Squash is very positive as it has no added sugar. I have very sensitive teeth and would much rather pay an extra 50 p than buy a product with lots of sugar in. And finally, there's perceived behavioural control. These are the things that help or hinder your decision making process when choosing to buy one product over another. Robinson's has two major helps. Its location is located in many shops and is always easily accessible with a wide variety of flavours. Additionally, Robinson's squash is always on offer two for two pounds, which encourages me to impulse buy. My purchase of Robinson Squash also falls under the consumer involvement theory, and more importantly, the low involvement and the rational side of the grid. This theory suggests that there are two main driving forces behind any purchase. The first being the amount of time and energy used when purchasing an item, and the second being the amount of emotion and logic used. When I buy Robinson Squash, there is little time and energy used, and also no emotion and no logic used. It's just a routine purchase. That's why I fall under the routine purchases in this theory. The second type of purchase I will be addressing is that of limited purchases. These usually involve a more deliberate decision process and are often more expensive. This would be a haircut at my local barber's mojos. This is more of a limited decision process because I don't go regularly enough for it to be routine. In terms of theory, this purchase definitely links to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It first fulfills my belongingness needs as it is a well established business with moderately high prices which gives their brand a high end image. So when I get my hair cut there, it associates me with this brand and fulfills my need to belong to this section of society. It then tackles my esteem needs because in my opinion, it gives the best haircut in rugby. And when I have a good haircut, it boosts my confidence and increases my self-esteem. My purchase of a haircut definitely links to the self-concept approach, which suggests that we buy from brands with similar characteristics to ourselves. This raises the four aspects that creates one's self, which first of all, improves my self-esteem, as my haircut is better, which improves my confidence. Second of all, it improves one's social self, which makes you feel more confident to go and socialise. Third is self-knowledge, which improves your understanding of my motives of why I shop where I do, which I think is to do with wanting to perceive a more high-end image. And finally, self-concept, which allows me to perceive myself in a better light. The final purchases I'll be analysing are extended purchases which involve a more systematic approach as a lot more time, money and energy are invested into one of these purchases. For me, this would be my recent purchase of the Nintendo Switch. Due to the time period of when I bought the Nintendo Switch, it definitely linked to the diffusion of innovation theory presented by E.M. Rogers in 1962. He suggests that a product diffuses across a certain population which results in that population adopting the product by the end, starting at the innovators, which is 2.5%, and finishing at the laggards at 16%. I would place myself in the late majority at 34%. This is because the late majority often require a lot of evidence before purchasing a product. This is true when I bought the Switch, as I watched many reviews on the games on the console before deciding to buy the product. The final theory I'll be addressing will be that of the consumer product acquisition process, which suggests consumers go through logical steps before making a purchase. I definitely went through these five steps before making my purchase of the Nintendo Switch. To start with is problem recognition. My problem was I'm travelling to Thailand, which is a 20 hour flight. Then, information search. I watched countless videos on YouTube and reviews of whether it was worth buying. After that was the evaluation of alternatives. The alternative for me was using my phone during this flight. However, I use my phone for music and I do not have enough songs to last me the whole journey. Next is the purchase decision, which led to me buying it. And finally, the post-purchase decision, which is that I'm very happy with the product. I hope you've enjoyed my consumer vlog and what my spending habits are.